Good day, everyone. Welcome to our Torah portion. And this week, we're going to be learning about emor, which means, in English, speak. And if you're new to the channel, we are a Messianic congregation called Congregation Yeshua. We meet at uh, Mississauga, Ontario. And uh, for more information about our services and the location, uh, you can email me at congregation underscore Yeshua at rogers.com or text me or call me at cell phone number 416-272-6019. And if you're uh, interested to learn more about why it's important for us to go back to our Jewish roots, this book will uh, help you. Uh, we have some very important information about the importance of um, going back to understanding that our Messiah, he is a Jewish Messiah, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this book will help you navigate through some of the questions you may have regarding why we go back to the Old Testament and all those good information. So if you're ready, our Torah portion again is Amor, which means to say or to speak. And it's found on Leviticus chapter 21, verse 1 to chapter 24, verse 23. And um, at a high level, chapter 21 talks about the holy priest. And you can see some of the themes going on here. Leviticus chapter 22, again, more requirements about the holy priesthood. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23 talks about the holy days as uh, these are the feasts of the Lord. And these are not Jewish tradition. This is the Lord's feast. So if you belong to the Lord, these are yours to observe. And finally, Le Leviticus chapter 24 talks, talks about the holy place. We're going to look more closely at the holy, the holy place where we find... Uh, the menorah, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6, it talks about uh, the calling of the children of Israel. Now, therefore, he says, if we, if we hearken unto my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own treasure from among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, And you shall be unto me a holy kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So from the, from the onset, God already told the children of Israel, I'm calling you, I'm setting you aside to be a, a kingdom or a nation of priests. And that calling or that that mandate was not changed past the, the birth and resurrection and the death of him, the, the, the birth, death, and resurrection of the Messiah. In fact, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, you see here that Yeshua, uh, one of the one of his uh, mandate is he said, Yeshua the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the earth earth's kings to him the one who loves us and has freed us from all sins and caused the cause of his blood and who has caused us to be a kingdom that is kohanim or the kingdom of priests for god his father so one of the objectives of why yeshua will will rule and reign for a thousand years is to teach us back into our rightful place that is a rightful calling that is to be the, a priest before him in fact in revelation chapter 5 again he he emphasized this and when the 24 elders fell fell down in front of the lamb each one held a harp and a gold bowl filled with the pieces of incense which are the the prayers of god's people and they sang a new song and he said you are worthy to take the scroll and break the seal because you, you you were slaughtered 
at the cost of the of blood, of blood you you ransom the god the god's people you are the ransom for god's person from every tribe language people and nation to you made them the, the uh, nation to you made them the uh, kingdom for kingdom, kingdom of god to rule as kohanim or priest to serve him and they shall be they shall rule forever on the earth so this has this is this is the the mandate that uh, that that we are to be um, that yeshua is going to to present us before the father as his priest to rule over all the earth so with, with that understanding you can see why being a priest um, is a higher calling and we're gonna see that later on in fact it says here um, in, in, in Leviticus chapter 21, verse 1 to 4, these are beginning scripture. And the Lord told, said to Aaron, O oh Moses, speak unto the priest and the sons of Aaron, and say to them, There shall none defile himself for the dead among his people. So God is saying, if somebody dies, you shall not defile yourself by exposing yourself or touching a dead body. The only exception, verse 2, except if the person that died is your kin that is near to him, unto him for, for his mother, for his father, for his sons, for his daughter, and for his brothers, and for his sister who is a virgin that is, uh, that is near unto him or has had no husband for her, may he defile himself. So God is giving an exception here. So for any close family member, yes, uh, by all means. But for any other, you shall not defile yourself. Why? Because God, as a representative of God, which is what the priesthood office is all about, they are here to represent God. They are to represent life. In fact, in, in John chapter 4, verse 6, Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Why? God is the source of life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. So Yeshua is the ultimate, the ultimate uh, source of life of the uh, or the way back and he's the he's the living word and god said don't defy yourself and and in in the same in the same breath he said okay as, as the priest of the lord um you 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 are not just to marry any other woman in verse 7 he says you shall not take a woman that is a harlot guess what what does revelation um chapter um 17 or chapter um, chapter, I, I believe, chapter um, in Revelation is talking about the harlot, and 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 and, and God said, "You shall not take a harlot, or profane, neither uh, they neither you take a, a, a woman that had, uh, put away from her husband. In other words, a divorced woman you cannot marry." And then in verse 13, you shall take a wife in her virginity. So he, he's saying, you know, the priest, you know, you, you, you are to marry not only is, he, is she, she should be a virgin, but she should be among his people. In other words, he should be from the children of Israel. So a priest cannot marry a Gentile woman. So the, why is that important? Why? Because the bride, remember, who is the high priest? The high priest is Yeshua, and, and, and God said, Yeshua's wife has to be the children of Israel. That's why Israel is the bride. It cannot be any other. If we want to be, if we being Gentiles want to be part of that, we have to be grafted in. And being grafted in is not an issue because the, the Word of God says a DNA Jew and a non-DNA Jew has the same rights and privileges. So that's why it's important for us to know these principles. Why? Because the world will tell you that the church, who is not, uh, these days they're saying the church is the bride. There's no, no, nowhere in the scripture that talks about the Gentile nations as the bride of the Messiah. Israel is, was, and will always be the bride of the Messiah. And in fact, um, it talk, in the next chapters, it talks about there are 12 blemishes that will disqualify a person or a, or, or a priest from serving the Lord. And we will look at all these 
very closely if, 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 if you want to look at it, uh, it it's found in Leviticus chapter 21 verse 18 to 20 and I summarize it very quickly here these are the 12 blemishes that will disqualify the priests from serving or coming into the presence of God number one if a, the, the priest is blind a blind man cannot uh, come into the presence of the Lord a lame a person with a flat nose Anything that is superfluous, meaning it it has an extra digit. Like for example, if you have six fingers on your on your hand, uh, one more than more than normal, then that that's what it means by superfluous. A man that is that is so broke broken footed, a broken handed person, a crook back or a hunchback, a dwarf. Number nine, uh, one that has blemish on his eyes, a person with scurvy. A person with scab, and finally, the one that has his stones broken. And we're going to look at this and understand this. What is God talking about here? He's talking about these are spiritual blemishes, and we're going to look at it uh, more, more, more closely. A blind person, a spiritually blind person, um, is is the one that doesn't see the things of God. In Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto him. So God is saying, if you are, if you are of the world, you will become spiritually blind. So God said, I cannot use a spiritually blind person. In First John chapter two verse nine says, "He that hath that has he that he is, he that says that he is in the light, and hate his brother is in darkness, until now, for he that love his brother abided in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hate his brother is in darkness." So God saying, "If you are, if you are." You hate your brother, you are in spiritual darkness. And God said, I cannot use you. So that's the first blemish. We cannot have spiritual blindness. And the second one is being a, a lame person. A lame person in the spirit, in, in, in spiritual language, is a double-minded person. Why? Because, uh, because a person is like a, a, a lame, lame person because his or her life is... is is not balanced so it's going up and down like a lame person uh one foot is shorter and then the other so his his walk is up and down so god said here i cannot use a double-minded person in proverbs chapter 26 verse 7 the legs of the lame are not equal so is the parable in the mouth of fools so god said you know a double-minded person is a fool in revelation chapter 3 verse 15 i know that you are what you are doing, you are neither cold or hot. How I wish that you were either one, I, I, either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So God is saying, I cannot use a person that is double-minded, who cannot, who cannot make up his mind. The third uh, blemish is a flat nose. A person uh, that has a flat nose is symbolic of a person with, with a spiritual blemish that he cannot discern right from wrong. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13, For everyone that, that, that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, he, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, only those who by reason of, of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So God said, I cannot use a a a new a newbie a, a new a new believer why because a new believer has not been grounded with the word he's not able to discern what is good and what is evil he's so easily discerned easily influenced by the things of the world in second in first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can they and he know them because they are not spiritually discerned. So God is saying, you know, uh, a fleshy person, again, is a flat-nosed person. God cannot use a a a uh, a person that is moved by the flesh. 
Number four, there is superfluous. Like I said, a superfluous person is a person that that has more than uh, uh, the natural. Uh, if you if if a human being should have two hands, he would have three hands, and all that. So a person that likes to add to the word of the Lord. That's to suit their lifestyle or their ministry. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2, You shall not add unto the word which I commanded you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 18, again, For I testify unto you every man that hear the words, the prophecy, of this book if any man shall add to these things God shall add unto him the plagues which are written in the book and if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in his book so very serious so very serious we are not to add or deduct from God's word and the fifth one is a person uh, that is has a broken foot. A broken-footed person is a, uh, a person walking in his own way. He's rebellious. Uh, in Isaiah 65, verse 1 and 2, I am sought to them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold, behold, behold me, behold me unto the nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all day unto you rebellious people which walk in a way which was not good after their own thoughts so God said I cannot use a rebellious person in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 oh Lord I know that that the way of a man is not in himself it is not in man that walk to direct his steps oh Lord correct me but with judgment not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. So, so Jeremiah is crying, God, don't make me a rebellious person. Number six is a broken hand, broken handed person. A person that is broken handed is 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 teaching deceit versus truth of God's word. He's not able to handle the truth. So in Second Corinthians chapter four, it's an example. Verse two, he said, "But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty." not walking in tra in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commencing ourselves commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god so god said don't don't walk deceitfully in second timothy chapter 2 this verse 15 study and show yourself approval to god a workman workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly divining the word of truth so we are to preach truth not to suit or deceive, deceive people for our own pleasure. Number seven is a crookback or a hunchback, a person burdened by the cares of this world versus surrendering to God. So God said, I cannot use a person that keeps keeps uh, worrying about things that that is that is beyond their 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 capability. In Mark chapter four, and these are they which which which, which are sown among the thorns. Such as hear the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. So God said, don't burden yourself or don't, don't allow yourself to be distracted by the things of the world. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me all your labor and heavily laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, God said upon you and learn from me for I am meek and, and lowly in heart. God is you is humble, and he shall you and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So God said, surrender your burdens. Whatever it is that you you're caring about the coronavirus, don't worry about that. Worry about your spirit and your soul, and and repent, and God will take care of you. God will 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 see to it that he, that that the pestilence will not come near your tent. Number eight is a person that is a dwarf or a midget. A uh, midget is one that is perfect, perfect in form, but the function in function, but below standard. So these persons that refuse to grow spiritually, so these are these are believers that are satisfied with, with, uh, with, uh, with the salvation message, and that's and that's 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 it. They they never go past the salvation message. Second Peter chapter three verse eighteen. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Yeshua, 
to, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child and I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So we are to, to, to put away childish things. We are not to, to, uh, to, to remain a child. And there's another scripture there, there in Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 4, verse uh, 14. It says, Whenceforth no more children tossed to and fro, carried away by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and a cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, the Messiah, Yeshua. Amen? Thine is a blemish in the eye. A person with a blemish in the eye, a person with distorted spiritual vision, intend to judge others before self. In my, so God cannot use a judgmental person that that po that points at others but doesn't look at the, his situation. Mar Matthew chapter seven verse one to five, you know, oh, thou will say to thy brother, let him let them pull out the mud out of thy eye, and behold, the beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy eye, and then you, you shall see clearly to cast out the moth out of thy brother's eye. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12, it says, This is generation that, that are pure in their eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation of how, of how, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. So God is, God hates pride. God hates people that 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 they think they are holier than others. In Isaiah chapter eleven verse th verse three, he says there and 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 shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sp of the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearings of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge, and the poor. And reprove the equity of the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the bread of his lips, and slay the wicked. So God is calling us to yes, we are to 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 discriminate, and to be to to be righteous judges, but not self righteous. In uh, number ten, a person with with scurvy. A person with scurvy means he has an imbalanced spiritual knowledge and only wants to hear one message we need to eat milk bread meat and fruits uh, in first peter chapter 2 it says as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby so we need milk in the beginning we need milk and then john chapter 5 verse 35 we need bread and yeshua said to them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me will never hunger and he that believeth in me shall never thirst we need bread we need meat hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but strong meat belong to them that are full of age even those who by reason of the of us have their senses exercised uh, to discern both good and evil and we need fruits we need a balanced diet in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love and then joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so we need we need a balanced diet we we cannot just go to a go a, go to a preacher and all he preaches for 20 years is is faith or grace and that's all he teaches you you need to get away from those because you will never grow you will never grow to a full mature believer in in number 11 is a, a person with scab a person with a head injury and their life is ruled by their mind versus the truth in god's word for his or her life unable to wear a crown of victory in their life why because they have they have a head wound and if, if, they can, if they have a head wound, you cannot wear a crown. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, My son, hear, hear the instructions of, of thy father, and forsake not, forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ointment of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. So you're able to, if you, if you, 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 you hear and obey the commandments of the Lord, you're able to, to, 
to, to, to wear the ointment of grace in your head. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16, more, Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a think, thinking, thinking of their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite thee with a scab of, of the crown of thy head, to the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will dis dis discover the their secret part. So God's saying, if you if you disobey me, what will happen is you're going to have a head injury. Therefore, you cannot wear a crown. Finally, a person with a broken stone. A person with a broken stone is the person spiritually does not have the ability or refuse to disciple others. So God's saying we we have to we have to make disciples of nations. We have to to. To, to make people um, know the Lord and uh, walk in His ways. In John chapter 15, verse 1 to, 1, 1 to 6, it says, I am the vine, the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Hus uh, husbandman. Every branch in me that bear not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, he prunes it, that it may bring forth fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto. Abide in me, and I in you, and as, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more, no one, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. So we are, we are to grow in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Thou therefore, my son, my, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Yeshua, and the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, that you shall be able to teach others also. So we are to, we are to, to replicate to teach others. And 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 in Leviticus chapter twenty two again, God is not only concerned about about offering um, a blemish free free life, but also they're saying you know when. When you when you bring an offering, he said in verse nineteen, you shall that you may be that that it may be acceptable. You shall offer a male without blemish of the beeves, of the sheep, of the car, of the goats. But whosoever has a blemish, you shall not bring, for it shall be unacceptable for you. So God is saying, you know, our lives cannot be uh, blemished the same way. Even the animal sacrifices, God is so particular. Look at this. Why? Because, because our lives is an offering to Him. If we, if we say, you know, we love God, we, we, we want to serve Him, we serve Him in the capacity of the priesthood. And the priesthood, we'll, we'll see later on, and uh, so we go on to this lesson, you'll see that the, the priesthood is a, is a higher calling than, than an ordinary uh, children of, uh, of Israel. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27 he's talking about the bride the bride is who's the bride israel's the bride and who are we we are grafted into israel so god said you know as as for us he's, he's talking about for husbands love your wives just as the messiah loved the messianic community indeed gave himself on its behalf in order to be set apart for god making it clean through the immersion in the mikvah or the baptism, so 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 uh, so to speak, in order to present the messianic community or the bride to himself as a bride to be proud of without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but holy and without defect. The other English translation for defect there is without blemish. So that those are the twelve blemishes that we were talking about. And then the scripture there, Mark 12, 30, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. So God is, is indeed calling us, calling us to, to a higher calling as His bride, as His representative. We, we claim to be His follower. Then God is saying, you are asking a good thing, and God is asking, uh, you know, a higher standard for each and every one of us. So in this Torah portion, you'll notice you know, from the even from the introduction, there are it's there are there are technically three sections that are talking. They're talking about the holy people, which is the priest, which is our calling, and then 
in the next chapter, chapter Leviticus chapter 22, 23, talking about holy times or holy days. And 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 in and on the the following chapter, chapter 24, it's talking about the holy place, the appliances, the furniture in the holy place, which is the the uh, altar of incense the table of showbread and the uh, the seven candle menorah so you'll notice in the in the previous Torah portion um, we were talking about this concept and God is 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 slowly introducing us to the concept of Tazria meaning the things and, and Metzora the thing that will make you unclean and and uh, we talked about uh, those uh, those seven conditions that can make a person unclean before the Lord, and and we we, ter we determine all of that to be uh, things that are associated with death. And in Akri Mot, um, or in in in, in Kedushim in holiness, we we understood that that holiness can can only be achieved by by our obedience. Or by how we serve others. In fact, in uh, in uh, Akrimot, he says holiness was defined by being kind to the poor. Remember, the God said when you when you are about to harvest, don't har don't harvest the edges. And if you, um, you you're gathering bushels, if one of the bushels fall down, don't go go back and get it, and and leave it for the poor. So God say, you know, uh, it's not enough that you don't steal, but you. You know, I'm calling you to a higher calling. You know, you you are to bless the poor so that um, the poor is legally legally allowed to harvest with you. So they're not stealing. The poor is not stealing by by coming alongside and and following your 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 higher servants that are doing the harvesting and make sure that you don't you don't harvest the edges. Leave that to the poor. And then he said, you 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 are to respect the boundaries. And the, the, very, the very first sin of man, Adam and Eve, what did they do? They disrespected God's boundaries. And God said, all the trees you may eat, but of the tree, my tree, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. So m mankind trespass the very, the very boundaries of the Lord. So God said, we are to respect your bound, the bound, ancient boundaries. And finally, he said, there is, a, there is that holy place. And God said, I want you to create a space for me. So holiness is, is not only uh, how we de deal with our neighbors and, and following the commandments, but also creating a mishkan, a, a creating a space for us, for the God of the universe. Uh, the holy praise, the holy praise later on, you'll see, reminds us of our times with God. So on the next chapter, you'll see here, remember the the uh, the Good Samaritan story where where the Levites and the priest uh, when they saw the man uh, that was that was robbed and they went on the other side. Why? Because they were they were trying to practice uh, they were they were trying to um, get away from 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 the person because uh, but the, 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 the issue was he was not dead so they, there's not nothing in the scripture that will prevent them from helping this person but they 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 uh, incorrectly applied the law of God anyway uh, just to show you why um, the priests and the Levites uh, left the guy there but there are holy days and holidays um, is a command by God so that He can make us set apart. So Leviticus chapter 23 talks about the seven, seven feasts. And uh, what I wanted to show you here, it says there in Leviticus chapter 23, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The appointed seasons of the Lord. So whose seasons are these? Whose, whose appointed days are these? Is this Israel's appointed days? No, it's the Lord. So if you belong to the Lord, guess what? These, these belong to you. Amen? So he said, speak to the children of Israel 
and say to them the appointed seasons of the Lord which you shall proclaim are to be holy covenant convocations and and these are my appointed seasons so again God is emphasizing the importance of this this uh, this this holy days this is not uh, for Israel this this is for all that believe in God for those belong to the Lord amen and in the, the the concept of holy days is there's an appointed time and also there's a meeting time and we're gonna see uh, the meeting time and, and and the appointed time and there's there's also the concept of a meeting place but uh, in fact in fact uh, if you want to uh, there's there's two sides of holiness the first one is uh, the first one is we need to create a space where we create the space for us and others, respecting properties, understanding boundaries. We talked about that concept of pure and impure. We are to, to separate ourselves from those that are that will make us unclean before the Lord. And finally, creating a tabernacle for God. Uh, space, we made a mishkan for God. We created a space for others, the poor during harvest. We don't have we don't harvest all the fringes. We create space for our neighbors by respecting their properties and boundaries, providing a place for them uh, to be partakers of the blessing. Um, with the with the holy days, we we are setting aside time for God. When we spend time for someone, when we if we spend time for someone, remember if you have a date with your wife, or if you if you're married with your husband or um, you set a date and you put it in your calendar and and the the reason why you're able to meet at, at the correct day at the correct time why because it's been preset it's been predetermined it's not just randomly you just saw each other and you were in the restaurant and you were there at the, at the right place at the right time there's no such thing uh, if you, if if you love somebody you set aside time for them you spend time with someone and you give up you give a place in your life to spend time with that person um, in fact the, the lord commanded the children of Israel because when they came, when they came to the land not all of them uh, lived close to Jerusalem so god said you know um, it, um, i know you, you live far away but um, I want to in Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 16 I said three times a year I, um, it, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he cho cho chooses so he chose Jerusalem so every every times a year you are to to visit at the feast of unleavened bread or Pesach the feast of weeks or Shavuot and the feast of Sukkot or the feast of tabernacles so so what what is God doing here? God is saying, you know, like if, if, if you have children and and your children are all, all over the world, you're you're telling your children, you, yes, you can you can work abroad, you can you can work far away, but at least three times a year, come and visit me. So God said, come and visit me. So again, these are these are love language. These are these are intimate language. God is God is wanting us to be to 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 be near to Him, to be to draw near to Him, and and and. Uh, the, the pilgrim feast is just an example of of uh, this this intimate times that God uh, wants uh, for us and you know these are these are his dates these are you know we cannot say you know I, um, if God said I want you to meet this day you cannot say God no I don't want to meet you I, I, I'm gonna meet you in this day it doesn't work that way because it's God who's setting these dates and we are to observe it ourselves amen and we cannot say okay you know um, you know, I want to to, to I, I want to change Shabbat to Sunday. You can you can't do that. You know, um, you cannot change what God has instituted. You know, you're not God. We're not God. We're not we're not God. And and some people like to believe that they're small God. No, we're not. We're, we're not that even, right? We're we're not God. We're God is God, and uh, it's either you 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 love and serve Him and obey Him, or you don't. And and there's no in between here. There's no in between. We cannot. We cannot compromise and say, "Oh, you know, God, I I will obey the the nine commandments, but on the on the tenth commandment, which is talking about your Sabbath, I will create my own Sabbath. I will create my own holidays. I'm gonna create my own feast. In fact, I will even name you. I'll, I'll create a name for you. You know, I don't like your name. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna create my own name. It doesn't work that way. 
And we cannot treat God that way. It's either His God or your God. And uh, in in the holy place, in Leviticus chapter 24, we're jumping around we, um, because of time. So he's talking about um, the three appliances in the holy place. You look at this. He says there in Leviticus chapter, chapter 24, verse 1, And the Lord said to Moses, saying, The command the children of Israel that they bring unto, unto the pure oil beaten for the light. To cause the lamp to burn continually. So you'll see this, this Hebrew word uh, uh, continually all over. Or the Hebrew word tamed continually uh, or mentioned multiple times. So God said, I want it, this, is, this is not a one-time light. I want you, it has to be burning continually. In fact, it has to burn every, every hour of every day. To cause the lamp to burn continu continu continually without the veil of the testimony or outside the veil of the testimony or out outside the Holy of Holies. In the tent of meeting shall Aaron order it from the evening or morning before the Lord. Continually, again that word tamed, continually, that Hebrew word tamed there. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation. And you shall order the lamps upon the pure candlesticks before the Lord continually. Again, uh, three times he, he wants to remind us he's good. Now, what's interesting about the menorah, the menorah is made out of pure beaten gold. Again, it's made out of pure beaten gold. Yeshua represents uh, gold as God, God in the flesh, and, and, and this gold had to be beaten. Yeshua had to be beaten, right? He, he learned obedience by the things he suffered, right? You heard that? Sir? And not only is the menorah representing Yeshua, but it has to be made of pure oil. The pure oil that is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The oil is the fuel that, that keeps the menorah lit, right? And finally, the third element of the menorah is that strips of cloth, which are the discarded, say that, the discarded uh, uh, or stained or blemished garments of the whole high priest. So the, high, the, the priest, when they minister before the Lord, they bring, uh, they bring blood. And when, the, when, when, they, when they offer uh, blood to, to the altar, um, most of the time their white garments are stained with blood. So once it's stained, they can no longer use that. So they have to re they have to remove that, and what they do with that, they cut it into strips, and some of it, they make it into the wick, or 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 the the wick for the menorah. And in most cases, they would use this to wrap uh, newborn male newborn babies. They will wrap them in swaddling clothes. So the swab Yeshua was wrapped in this uh, this discarded priestly garment. So why is that important? Why? Because in order for the menorah to light, you need three elements. You need Yeshua, who is the who is the who is the the structure, the 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 foundation. You need the oil of the Holy Spirit to empower you, and you and God allows us by His grace. Say that by His grace, we are like filthy rags. Isaiah said, but God said, but despite our filthiness, He still chose. To save us and to use us. He uses us. As we yield to the word. We, we are shaped by the, the, the candlestick. And we are fueled by his Holy Spirit. He gave us his Holy Spirit. And you know what? We need to trim. The, the more you trim your, la, your wick. The brighter is your light. If, if your wick is... Uh, is is uh, long and it's uh, has full of full of moss, then you, your light will not be bright. That's why you need you need to trim your wicks. So so in order for the to, for the menorah to light um, and to write to, to, all the elements are there and the, the 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 third element is us really. We are transformed by the word. The more we, the more we we conform to the word of God, which is what the priest does. We stay connected with Yeshua and the Holy Spirit. We will we will become His light. In fact, He said in John chapter eight, verse twelve, Yeshua spoke to them again, said, "I'm the light of the world. 
whosoever follows me. So our obedience, will we will never walk in darkness, but we'll have the light which gives life. So God's saying, you are my light that will give life to the world. It's 1 John chapter 2, verse 7. I write no new commandments to you, but an old one commandment. So he, this is not new. In verse 9, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip to verse 9. But he who, 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 he who says he... he, he he who says he is in the light and hates his brother, we, we, we read it earlier, he is in darkness until now. But he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling for him. Right? So we, we, are, to, we are to be the light of the world. And, and the way we do that is by, by trimming or being obedient. So you see here, the the sec the third and second element the second element is the the third and second element is the table of showbread the table of showbread he says there in in verse five you shall bake fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof two parts of an ephah shall you shall be in one cake and you shall set them in two rows six in a row upon the pure table before the Lord. So he's talking about the table of showbread. And then he says, that, and then you shall put pure frankincense with each row, that it may be uh, a bread of a memorial and even the offering made by fire. So he said, you're going to light the incense every day as you, as you uh, uh, check the menorah light, you are to make sure that the, the, the incense is burning. So, so the bread here represents the the, uh, the the table of showbread represents the children of Israel, the bride, and in the bride well, he was entrusted with the word of God, the Torah, and God said, "The Torah is the is, is my word that you shall eat every day. This is the one that will that will um, that will that will that will uh, make you grow spiritually. We are to eat his bread." And he said, in, in, in fact, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, he says, The tempter uh, came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, this thing, uh, order these stones to become bread. And, he, and Yeshua said, the, the, the Old Testament says, that Tanakh says, Man does not eat, live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of Adonai. So the word of God, Yeshua, the word, the living word, is our food, our spiritual food. God say, every day, this bread is to be eaten. John 6, 32, 35, Yeshua said to them, Yes, indeed, I tell you, it wasn't Moshe, O Moses, who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father is giving you the genuine bread from heaven. For God's bread is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And he said to them, Sir, give us this bread now. And Yeshua answered, I am the bread which, which, is, which is life. Whosoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever thirsts in me will never be thirsty. So Yeshua said, you know, you'll be transformed by my word. Eat it every day. Then you can be my light. So the word of God transforms it. The word of God is the one that, that convicts us. And, and the, how we apply that in our lives will make us the light of the world. And finally, of course... Our relationship with God does not end in in us just eating and being the light, but we need to to the, our prayer life, the, the 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 altar of incense, which is burned every day continually, and 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 the 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 the, the pure incense, the the pure frankincense each each row, and he said in Revelation chapter eight, what is what is the what is the altar of incense represent in, in Revelation chapter eight? Another angel came and stood uh, at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given to him much incense, and he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended before God. Out of the angel's hand, so so God is saying our relationship with Him is not only learning about the Word of God, applying it in our life, being the light, but also our prayer life is very important. Why? Because that's the three-way channel. Our 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 walk is a, is is an offering before the Lord, our daily prayers before Him, and us Him revealing to us His Word and us speaking to Him daily. So that's how we. We become his holy people.
that's how we become his holy people so again in summary these three sections we are as his priests we are called to a higher calling we're not just we're not just ordinary citizens of the kingdom god said you are my priests you are my representatives and as your as my representatives i've given you holy times and holy days which are you which are which are which you are to 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 follow and and to observe as your holy people and of course he's reminding us the the appliances in the in the holy in the holy place where our 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 being a witness as his as 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 a representative of yeshua and our our daily bread which is his word and our prayer life is very important to god so to to conclude tonight um amor reminds us that we are to aspire for a closer walk with god we need to live like his bride in waiting we are his bride in waiting and his bride he said you know we are to be without spot wrinkle or blemish allocating space and time for him we need to allocate space and time for him space by keeping ourselves clean and setting aside time for him by observing his holy days his, his showers so if you are desiring to be that let us pray as we close today father we just Albino Malcano, we just thank you for the truth that is in your word. We thank you that you have reminded us that our calling is not just to be a citizen of the, of, of the nation of Israel, but the bride in waiting, the priest that will serve you. We, we, we serve you in the office of the priesthood, a higher calling. You, are, you call us to be, to be higher, to be higher than... Uh, as we represent you, we are to be your light here in the earth. And we thank you that even though uh, we are filthy rags, that Father, you, you, uh, in your grace and in your mercy and your love, you, you choose to be able to use us to share in your, in your work at this time on earth. You called us to be your light, and we pray that we will, we will continue to, to trim our lives to repent of all our sins and to shine brightly before you for the glory of the Father. We thank you today. We thank you for this time that you've given us. May you continue to bless every person, every family that has, that, that's that been listening to your broadcast. And may we truly be the light of the world. We ask this in Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And I thank you once again. We thank you for joining us. And if you would stand, we will. Uh, I want to bless you and mark you. The Lord told Moses to tell Aaron to bless the people and mark them. And so are you marked tonight, today? Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Peace in the name of our Lord and Yeshua, our Shar Shalom, our Prince of Peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. God bless you all and see you next time.